The 1990s were extraordinarily violent in Africa. Then, from 2000, the levels of armed conflict declined, and 2005 saw the lowest level of fatalities in several decades. The launch of the African Union's Agenda 2063 in 2013, however, coincided with an increase in instability in Africa in 2014 and 2015. This increase was mostly driven by events connected to the ongoing fallout from the Arab Spring, the rise of violent Islamist terrorism and a surge in violent protests, often during flawed elections. Recent data points to a resumption of the previous downward trend. Africa is becoming more stable, but its future will remain turbulent. That is because multiple structural pressures drive conflict and violence in Africa, and the nature of conflict is cyclical. First, it is extremely difficult for war-torn countries to escape a vicious cycle of repeat violence that often spills over into the neighborhood. Peacekeeping is the most effective way to prevent wars from recurring and to protect the neighborhood. But peacekeeping is expensive. Support from countries such as the United States is waning and the United Nations is facing a legitimacy and funding crisis. Second, Africa's rapid democratization carries risks. In many countries, the ballot has become the new battleground. Violence is also shifting to urban areas in the form of riots and anti-government protests as Africans demand more accountability and better service delivery. In South Africa, Egypt, Nigeria, Tunisia, Algeria, Kenya and Somalia, people have taken to the streets most often. Violence around elections has increased, often because incumbents try to predetermine outcomes. Third, countries with large youthful populations experience more violence. Half of Africa's population is under 19 years old. Marginalized young men are often involved in crime, as well as serving as recruits for terrorist groups such as Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab. Fourth, close to 40% of Africans live in extreme poverty. States with large portions of poor people generally lack the resources and capacity to prevent, manage and contain violence. Poor countries are significantly more prone to armed conflict than rich countries. Fifth, poverty is exacerbated by unequal access to resources between ethnic, religious or social groups. If governments are perceived to advantage specific groups, it fuels grievances and often violence. Sixth, most regimes in Africa are neither fully democratic nor fully autocratic but somewhere in between. This makes them unstable and prone to violent disruption. Lastly, transnational organized crime is becoming more entrenched in Africa with dire consequences for public health, community security and governance. Somalia, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Sudan, Burundi, Libya, Cameroon and Chad are likely to continue to face high levels of armed violence. In the long run, only rapid, sustained and inclusive development can reduce the deep-rooted political, social and economic pressures that lead to violence. That requires a leadership willing to build governance structures that are responsive and accountable to its citizens. Africans demand democracy. In a series of reports, the Institute for Security Studies explores the demographic, agricultural, manufacturing and governance transitions required to set Africa on a more sustainable pathway. Connect with us online at www.issafrica.org.